We're in Vogue, and we're happy to be here in Atlantic City. Yes. She's Cindy. I'm Terry. That's Rona. <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we have a new record, our forthcoming record. Um, the title is uh, Electric Cafe. Uh, the first single is Deja Vu, uh, which can be streamed on iTunes and Spotify, Pandora. Pandora. Yeah. And you can get it at Amazon Music, blah, blah, blah. Yes. <laughs> Please excuse me because I'm sort of, well, I'm not sort of, I am very angry. And as many of you know, I really don't like black men. I, I, I don't. And they're not all. I love my brothers, but there's a certain segment of us. We are some very silly, silly men. And that's why... I will always be pro black woman first because I can't get these brothers together and they are rather embarrassing, very embarrassing. Makes me feel so shame to be a male descendant of slave born in America having dark skin. They are very embarrassing with their smart ass. So smart, but yet so dumb, so intelligent, so stupid, so arrogant. Ain't got a pot to piss in running around here like they own the world. Living in the house of their masa. You live in the United States, you are living in the house of your masa. And clearly, you are comfortable living with your masa, but yet and still, you got the nerve to act like you some type of big shot. What brings me, what got, oh man, what has you so angry? Angel snuffed up seven, I will tell you. When I was a child, I had a bully problem. This guy, for two or three or more years, constantly was pushing me around, making mockery of, mockery of me, beating me up, just harassing for, for, for more, than, more than three years probably. And I didn't do nothing except run my sissy ass home and cry. That's what I done. I'm going to say that again. I didn't do nothing except run my sissy ass home to cry. I didn't run to mama. I just went home and just cry. However, this is the, this is the ironic thing. At home, I had the nerve to get tough. I had the nerve to get tough with my mother or my parents. At home, I had the nerve to get tough and fight my siblings and tell my siblings off. 
and I would fight my siblings with everything I had. I mean, just punch and fight and beat. But when it came to the real, see, this is the key. When it come to the real enemy that was giving me hell, I would cry like a baby, like a little funky sissy, a pure coward. So I know what a coward is, because I was a coward, 1,000%, no doubt. Ain't no shame in the game. That's what I was. I was truly pathetic. I would not say nothing to this bully, but I would tell my mama, I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. And push my and and, bu and actually bully my siblings around. Now, I'm saying all this to say. Just recently, I saw a video by our brother that calls himself Young Farrell. It was Young Farrell, our brother, brother Ben X, and some other brothers I'm not really familiar with, but they came together because of this. Uh, drama of information that's out here and they came together to try to sort their differences and try to get to some kind of understanding and to my knowledge they came to a peaceful resolution young Pharaoh, brother Ben X and these brothers they got themselves together 20 some year old young men I I applaud you as your elder I'm an elder too, y'all. As your elder, I applaud young Pharaoh and Brother Ben and all those involved in trying to squash what is really nonsense because it can be handled in a much more mature manner. However, when you're 20 some years old, you're not that mature. However, if you can come together like these brothers done, that shows that you are attempting to evolve and grow. However, you have your elders. You have certain elders like Sonetta. Yeah, I'm calling out your name. I show my face every day. You have your elders like Sonetta and some other idiots supposed to be elders running around here hyping people up painting a picture causing a uh, the same type type of the same type of atmosphere that Louis Farrakhan done for Malcolm or done towards Malcolm to cause people, idiots who aren't thinking, that they may cause some type of harm to young Pharaoh. And the most sickening thing is that they are going to imply that young Pharaoh's baby should be or should be murdered. Take the life's baby. Take the life of this infant that has nothing to do with y'all's silly drama. Why? Why does young Pharaoh's child, his infant, deserve to be a target for murder? Here you are, grown ass people. Even in the movie Scarface, when Scarface was told to make a hit on this diplomat, but the diplomat had his wife and children in the car, even Scarface, a gangster, said, that's a line I don't cross. I don't murder women and children. But you have these cowards, these suckers, that's actually going to come and put in the minds of some deranged idiot and tell them, yeah, you, you, you right. You should murder that infant, young Pharaoh's baby. And if we allow the nation of Islam or anybody connected to something like that, if we let them slide like you did Malcolm, because after they after they murdered Malcolm, you burned down the city, the, the brothers and sisters, some of them burned down the mosque, I believe in uh, Temple Number 7, and they did do a little something, but you should never had continued to support that organization. But you're done. You should never allow something like this to happen again. If something happened to young Pharaoh or his baby or anybody, this you should not tolerate. 
For what? And so why they want to kill young Pharaoh's infant? Well, you see, uh, young Pharaoh disrespect the messenger. Young Pharaoh disrespect Minister Farrakhan. Young Pharaoh, young Pharaoh disrespect, young Pharaoh disrespect. So what? Nigga, you get disrespected every damn day. You get disrespected. You was disrespected before your ass was even born in America. You was disrespected. So the hell what? Has nothing to do with young Pharaoh at all, period. You was born in a nation that raped you, raped your mothers, raped your girlfriends and wives, murdered you, murdered you, blow your, your, your little girls up in churches, enslaved your people over 300 some years. Tar and feathered you, lynched you all over this country. What are you going to do about that? Not a damn thing. Even in modern times, you have Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, and Eric Gardner, and Sandra Bell. The list goes on and on. They call you nigger in your face. All the time. Nigga is one of the nastiest, foulest words that you could be called. But when it comes to the real enemy, but when it came to my real bully, I was solid. Ran home sissy, crying like a baby. You run home like a sissy. When it comes to the real enemy, the only thing you do is go on YouTube and talk about the white man. The white man do that. The white man do that. <laughs> the white man that's all you do you are silent you don't get big and bad and bold and talk about killing his children and you know the reason why because you're a coward because you know if you mess with the white man you know he's going to start off with the police then he's going to step up to the FBI CIA the state military the federal, federal military, and you scared, you shaking your boots just at the, at the thought of that. But you know young Pharaoh don't have a military. You know Malcolm X didn't have a military. So these cowards, they're going to step up to show off in front of another slave and show up, trying to show off in front of another Negro. But the real enemy, you're not going to do nothing with. When Michael Johnson and Gavin Long took law in their own hands and murdered some cops or whatever. Y'all was silent. You didn't say a damn thing. I'm probably the only one that said, that said, I support those brothers. I really wish they would have got more bang for their buck. But they did go out like a soldier. I thought that's what y'all wanted. That's what y'all, the kind of stuff that y'all like. They were silent. But because young Pharaoh, he disrespect. You get this you get disrespected every damn day. So the hell what? What you gonna do? And I want to remind y'all about Malcolm's murderers, his killers. After they murdered Malcolm X, the nation of Islam, of, of whom didn't have nothing to do with it, of course, they said they would support and get the best lawyers available for these guys that was accused of Malcolm's murder. And guess what? They abandoned them guys. They was on their own. The Nation of Islam did not do nothing for these guys. And they thought if they killed Malcolm, they would be viewed as some kind of hero. And they was not hero. So you think that you're going to be some kind of hero because you hurt young Pharaoh and his baby. You are sadly mistaken. You are sadly mistaken. This is 2018, and I know we not we might be a little on the dumb dumb side, but we as a people not going for it. You're not gonna be no damn hero. And so you have these guys that murdered Brother Malcolm, living, living as out of the public as possible, and living in pure shame, feeling like a damn fool because they thought they was gonna be these great heroes. You thought. Master Farad Muhammad was going to come out of the sky and say, good job done. Why would God, why would Allah be, be
be uh, pleased with murdering one of the greatest, one of the greatest uh, uh, people that that ever walked among us. Why would Allah be pleased with that? Elijah Muhammad's greatest helper. Why would Master Farah Muhammad be happy because y'all murdered Elijah's greatest helper that was sent to Elijah? Because y'all was immature, silly, cowardly people. These crackers burned down the, uh, burned up the Muhammad Speaks newspaper trucks and the FYI y'all didn't do nothing. Nothing. The only time you ever got try to hurt a, uh, a, a real enemy is because you had no choice. Because they was jumping on you first. Cowards. I don't like cowards. See, that's, that's the problem I have with, with soul brothers. So cowardly. If I can't deal with the real enemy, I damn sure not going to attack a baby. Oh, attack a baby. Oh, y'all. Woo. Woo. Man. Pathetic. Truly pathetic. And the world look at you as a as the coward and the clown that you really are. There are those who come to me all the time, and I really. And, and, and honestly, I'm getting very sick of this subject because y'all cannot prove your position. You can't even begin to. This is 2018, and what they was talking about in 1951, 1939, 1920, or whatever, don't mean nothing. This is a whole new ball game, and there is new information. People are finding different things and starting to think very, very differently. It's just like having a court case. There are many innocent people in jail, in prison right now because the jury was denied to hear a very vital and relevant piece of information. So without that information, they could not make a proper decision that probably could have stopped a person from going to jail or prison. You must have all information, vital information, in order to make the very best decision that you can. So we have been denied certain information from the 30s, the 1900s, 1800s, 1600s, or whatever. We have been denied the so-called Negro in America. We have been denied certain information. This you know. And so we build upon the information that we are given and we call it fact. It's not a fact. It's circumstantial. It's an allegation. It is not a fact. Because if it was a fact, then you would be standing strong, but you don't. There are those who I call African wannabes. They have to be African wannabes because they don't, they don't act African. They speak no African language. They try to wear some type of African looking clothes. Well, I don't know what the clothes represent. I don't know. They speak no African language. They don't live no kind of African way. They look like the average Negro on the street. If you want me to be an African, be the African that you're talking about so I can look and see what it's supposed to look like. You look like an average Negro to me. Going to the same Negro job that everybody else going to. Living with racists. You're an African that live with racists. And you're not trying to go nowhere, no time soon. So I don't know what the hell you talk, keep talking about this African stuff for. Because your ass going to live, you was born here, and you're going to die here. That's the bottom line. I was an African. I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. Y'all done turned the whole thing into a religion and act the same way religious folks. They don't, if you don't believe in Jesus, they get all upset 
You you talk about you're not an African. Oh, they get all upset. Oh my Lord, he's a fool. He, he don't believe. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't believe in Allah. The same kind of stuff made a religion out of it. A belief system. But one of the things that many of the African wannabes do is they want to tell me about the scholars. Well, you know, this scholar said this, and the scholar said that. Uh, we are, we are African people, and they got all these books. For every scholar that you have, for every book that you read, I can guarantee you, you can find somebody that will counter that point. Somebody that will say the exact opposite. I guarantee you that. There are many people, scholars, who will say that the so-called nigger in America is not an African. We know this. There are many books that you can read and you will find that will say that the so-called Negro, the descendant of slaves born in America, is not an African. The same thing. My position is you're not an African or Native American, so I get everybody angry. We have become a people unto ourselves. We have those things in the background, in our ancestry, no doubt. Makes no difference if it's, if it's native or, or whether it's people from the African continent or from the islands or whatever. We have that in our background. That's the only reason why we look similar or look like some of these other people, but we are not them. Just like a nectarine looks like a peach. But it's not a peach at all. It's a nectarine. But it has in its ancestry peaches and plums. We are the same thing. We are not them. So earlier this week, I was working with a, a brother from the Sudan. And I noticed very quickly because he had an accent, he just carried himself differently. And I'm like, hey, brother, um, you're not from here. Where, you, where are you from? He says, I'm from Sudan. I said, okay. So I began to question him. I'm like, well, uh, do you consider yourself an African? He said, yes. Now, when he said yes, a lot of you said, see, man, see? He said that he's African. Let him finish. He said, I am an African simply because I come from the continent. But I am Sudanese. I'm from the Sudan. When you say that you're African, you just say you're African. You don't finish. You don't say, well, I'm, I'm from the Sudan. I'm from Ghana. I'm from Nigeria. You don't say none of those things because you know that you didn't, you're not from those things. He knows. He's not speaking in general terms or relative terms. He's telling you, I'm from the Sudan. I said, can I said, can this can people from the Sudan also be Ghanaian and Congolese and uh, no, 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 no. We are different. We are different. We are not the same. He confirmed and backed up everything that I've been telling us. If you use common sense, I don't have to tell you nothing, but we don't want to use common sense. There are countless different looking tribes and languages. On that continent. You cannot be all of them. You can be an African. Simply because. You are on that continent. And you can't even say that. You was born right here. In America. For generations. For generations. And I asked him. Do you believe. That the dark skinned people here in America. Do you believe that we're African? He, he said immediately, no, 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 no. He told me we don't fit in the continent. We become a people of our own. Whatever that is, we are not Africans. This coming from a person that you would call a for real African from the Sudan. He said, no, you are not. You, you're not African. You, you are something different. He said, when you go to the continent, I'm very sure the people there immediately see that you're different. You're not. I don't care what you look like. Somebody keep telling me, 
Oh, you know you look like so-and-so. Uh, it don't make no difference. Those people, just like we know, when they come over here, they from so-and-so. We immediately know they are not us. They know immediately we are not them. This is not to say we are not brothers and sisters and we're not related and we're not some and we're not related and we're not family. That's not what is being said. What is being said is that you are not them. You are not an African. We are not Africans. Never was an African. Never will be. And in reality, you don't want to be no damn African. Because if you wanted to be an African, you would you would learn a language. You would eat their food. You would turn yourself into them. But you are a Negro. You ain't trying to make no attempt to be nobody except a damn Negro. An African wannabe. That's all that you are. And so here is a person from the African continent telling you the same thing. But because you believe what you believe, you're not going to believe him either. Uh, he don't know what he's talking about. Well, he's a he's an African, what you want to be. He's from the continent. He's from the Sudan. That's what you want to be. And he's telling you you're not him. So he's here in, in America trying to make some money to send to his family. No more, no less. He's not interested in being an African-American, a real African-American, Sudan-American, whatever you want to call it. He's not interested. He's here. His mission is to make money to send to his children back home. He has no intent to bring his children to become dark Europeans like us. He does not want his children to be influenced by American society. Only the American dollar they can spend. That's all the only thing he's interested in. So you have brothers and sisters that have actually some of, there are some so-called African Americans that have actually moved over or live in Africa. They are not living the African way of life. They are still living in the manner that they are used to living here, the best way they can. Because they are dark Europeans. They are the descendants of slaves born in America. Just because you get on a plane and take your ass to Africa, don't change nothing. You're still not an African. You are a Negro visiting. Your children can be African. If you keep them away from American society, they are born there, and the only thing they know is that culture. Then they can say, and if that's what you want to do, then they can say, I'm an African. In that sense, well, they are. They was born on the continent. They are living the life that those people are living. You ain't doing that. Stop making a claim that you're not. You Maybe you want to be. It makes you feel good, but you're not. You never was them and you would never be them. We, the descendants of slaves born in America, we are a product of slavery, bred to be a damn slave, just like a cow and a chicken and a horse, we was bred to be slaves. And our DNA is a mixture of all kinds of stuff. Who knows? But one thing is clear, we're not a Native American, we're not African, we have become a people unto ourselves. And we should build upon that and stop being shamed in what we become, just like Elijah Muhammad said, accept your own and be yourself, but you're not a righteous Muslim. Keep that religion stuff out of it. It has nothing to do with religion. Understand who and what we are. And I suggest that we begin with the concept of soul, because soul comes from up out of us. It is not a label that came from our masa or from Africa or from anywhere, it actually comes from up out of our womb. Our ancestors gave us that. Build on that the same way that you built on the African thing and the black thing and all this other stuff that somebody else created that you didn't have nothing to do with. You allow others to describe and label you. And this uh, brother from, from the Sudan, he, he don't understand how we can live here with these races and racism like the way we have been doing for the last hundred years. Because he, he gets
gets a little uh uh he gets he's got introduced to to being discriminated against because he know because of his skin color he was like how do y'all do that i said man i, I don't know i was born in, into the stuff and they've been tolerating it for the last <laughs> going on 500 years he said he just want to make a decent money and get the hell out of this country here you are talking about you want to be arrogant Got, I'm pretty sure, more money, more resources than him, and your ass gonna live and die here. But you, you are African. Get out. Y'all so fake. At least if you was real, I could take you more serious. You're not real about it. It's just some more feel-good, religious-sounding crap. You know it's bogus, and I know it's bogus. There is a troll, a faceless troll, that does not like me, but I don't know what it is about trolls. They don't like you, but they stay on your page and leave dumb comments. I tried to treat this troll like a human being, and then it got to the point where this uh, faceless troll just just one of those things there's no talking to the troll and yeah so I allow the troll to just write crap on my page if that's what you want to do then you do it I will no longer comment to you you had your chance to speak like a civil human being you refuse to, to do that because every argument the troll brings I counter it because what the troll is talking about does not make sense. However, I want to start this video like this. The troll that claims to be a dark-skinned person, always bragging about what white folks do and how smart pink people are. That's what this troll do. But claims to be a dark-skinned person, I guess they are different. They are highly intelligent. They are very smart. They ain't like the rest of us. The troll tells me that the dark skinned people, the descendants of slaves born in America have a dark skin. This troll tells me that we suffer low IQ, low intelligence. And of course, I'm going to look at us in a very positive manner and blow that off. But the more I begin to look at us, I have to be real. I, I, I might have to agree with the troll Something is wrong. We must suffer from low IQ. We must have a very low intelligence quota. We must have. You know why? Now see, look at this. I don't like being made a fool. Do y'all like being made a fool of? Some of us don't. Some of us, we like being a fool. I remember I made a brother angry at me one time. He said, he said, Angel Snup Nup 7, Angel Snup, don't urinate on my head and then try to tell me it's lemonade. <laughs> I think that was so funny. Don't urinate on my head, then you're going to try to tell me it's lemonade. Now check this out. 1981, I believe. I still have the flyer. I should have got the flyer. It was the big meeting Louis Farrakhan had the Nation of Islam. I was a young Muslim, a young FOI, and I believe we had it at the Armory or something like that. It was 1981, I believe. And we were standing in front of the Armory, and right across the street was the Anti-Defamation League or whatever, the, the, the Jewish whatever. I don't know what they were. I just know they did not like Farrakhan. And, uh, they was on the other side of the street saying, who do we want? Farrakhan. How do we want him? Dead. Who do we want? I want Farrakhan. How do you want him? I want him dead. That's what they were saying. Now, mind you, not one FOI decided to run across the street and punch one in the mouth. But they can make death threats against young Pharaoh's baby. I just, just wanted to bring that out. 
because it didn't happen. You know, wonder why. Now, here's here are some people on the street talking about your leader. How do you want them? Who do we want? Farrakhan. How do you want them? Dead. That's what they were saying. Out of the street, in the public. There you go. Go punch one in the mouth. Nobody did nothing. But they're going to make threats against a baby. Coward sissy fight. That. That's where it started. The Jews versus Farrakhan. Now, don't urinate on my head and tell me it's lemonade. I noticed throughout the years there's a pattern going on here. Let that die down. Here it comes back again. The Jews versus Farrakhan. It goes on for a little while. Then it's right back again. Jews versus Farrakhan. Farrakhan said this. Here the Jews are angry. Back and forth. Something is wrong with this. Y'all don't see that there's something wrong with this pattern. Over and over again. It's a show. There is no move that the Jews make on the nation of Islam. There's no move that the nation of Islam made on the Jews. It's some back and forth rhetoric garbage that don't mean nothing to nobody. Also, in this, sometimes the Congressional Black Caucus get caught up. See, I've been around. I, don't, I see these things, and I have not forgotten. There's a pattern going on here. And always, Farrakhan always said, they scared to be associated with me because I said this and because I speak truth to power. They don't give a damn about you, man. All these presidents and Congress people uh, ignore you. Louis Farrakhan. The only one that really give him attention is the so-called Jew that's playing this game. It's a game, y'all. Don't urinate on my head and tell me it's lemonade. Because I want to tell you, I want to bring up some things that you need to also look at this. Now, Louis Farrakhan has been accused of hate speech since the 1980s. I'm going to remind you, Louis Farrakhan has been accused by the Jews, a very powerful group, of hate speech since 1981. So my question is, and even till recently, his words has been called hate speech. If Louis Farrakhan is spewing hate speech, then you tell me why on YouTube and social media, why does Facebook and why does YouTube Keep the Nation of Islam videos up. Answer that question to me. It's called hate speech. Many Caucasian people will say that's hate speech. But Nation of Islam videos on Facebook and YouTube are not touched. Somebody like me, over 100 of my channels have been terminated. Easy, easy. I was accused of hate speech. I took Google to court. They could not prove hate speech. So they try, they take down my channels for other reasons. But it won't be hate speech. They could not prove hate speech. So I don't spew hate. I went to a court of law and the judge determined I don't spew hate speech. But Louis Farrakhan has been accused and has been taught, been told, and this and the country. View him as a hate monger, hate speech. But none, the none of this, none of the videos on YouTube and Facebook has been touched. Jews control YouTube and Facebook. Why they, why they haven't taken down Louis Farrakhan videos? Mind you, also some more points. Louis Farrakhan played the violin for the Jews. Hmm. What's up with that? Has he played the violin? For y'all, the videos I ever seen, he played the videos for Jewish folks. Has he played the violin for y'all anytime? I never seen the video. I know he never played the violin for me. I know that for a fact. Louis Farrakhan talk about his Jewish friends. He also talks about sitting down, making peace with the Jews. But he did not make, he didn't want to make no peace with Malcolm. 
He didn't want to make no peace with Khalid or Eric Muhammad or anybody else that's black. Don't urinate on my head and tell me it's lemonade. I also heard Louis Farrakhan say, I believe that his grandfather is a Jew. One of his great grandfathers, somebody in his family is a Jew. Louis Farrakhan has also adopted Scientology and integrated it into the Nation of Islam teaching. His version of Nation of Islam. Because the Nation of Islam don't exist no more. He has no legal authority on the Nation of Islam. It went into the, the uh, into public domain. Anybody can be a claim Nation of Islam. It just so happened that he was the national representative, but he don't run or control nothing. He owns, Louis Farrakhan does not own no intellectual property of the Nation of Islam. He is not the Nation of Islam, period. That's a fact. Minister Farrakhan, he does not control what his children do, but he is happy to take pictures with his Caucasian uh, daughter-in-law, he has members, Caucasian members of the Nation of Islam, along with Mexicans. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that it takes 25 years of, of, of a Caucasian person under the study of Islam to be accepted. I know these people that are FOI and MGT Caucasian people, I know they have not studied Islam for no 25 years. We, we know that. But y'all get all involved into this hype. Umar Johnson defending Farrakhan, King Noble defending Farrakhan. It's all a sideshow because everybody wants some of that viewership that Louis Farrakhan can get. So if I'm on Louis Farrakhan's side, maybe his followers will support me, Umar Johnson. Maybe some of his followers will look at me different, King Noble. That's what it's all. It's a sideshow. All about celebrity. All about the hype. Don't urinate on my head and tell me it's lemonade. It's all it's a game. And if you're falling for this game, maybe this troll is right. We suffer from a very, very low IQ. We think that urine is lemonade. That cool, refreshing drink. <laughs> Louis Farrakhan is a celebrity seeker. Nothing was going on with Louis Farrakhan. It got all quiet. Then all of a sudden, the only thing he had to do was get on his big, big stage, Savior's Day, and try to say, that you, and there, there you go. Again, it's a pattern that don't mean nothing. And everybody jumping on this, this, this circus. What has Louis Farrakhan done in 40 years? Nothing. What law has he changed? What policy has he changed? How many jobs has he created? Savior, Savior's Day is supposed to be the day where the Nation of Islam tells the public how they have progressed the, during the last year. He never does that because he has not done anything. Brother Ben said he keeps what Louis Farrakhan does in secret. What you keeping it a secret for? What you hiding it for? Because when it's all said and done, it's all about a hype. The group public enemy said, don't believe the hype. Can't y'all see? Don't you have a, a high IQ? Can't you see that somebody is urinating on your head telling you it's lemonade? Can't you see that you've been bamboozled? He's not going nowhere. He has taken the nation of Islam nowhere. It is the same nation of Islam that it was when I was a part of it back in the 1980s. I'm telling y'all this. It has gone nowhere. And you all excited because of the hype. When I was 18 years old, I admit, I confess, the hype got me. But as I began to grow older, I began to see uh, this ain't what it's cracked, all cracked up to be. As you grow older, some of you, 
you will begin to see, ain't nothing, this ain't going nowhere. You will see that it was nothing but piss and somebody was telling you it was lemonade. You will see that. I have nothing personal against Minister Farrakhan. He's not a leader. He's incompetent. He's a celebrity seeker. How, how is he going to rub, shake hands with Snoop Dogg, but when I write him a letter, he won't respond. When Eric Muhammad want to talk to him, he don't respond. Or Khalid. Something is wrong. The reason why he's able to do what he's done is clearly the troll must be right. We suffer low IQ. But for me, don't tell me it's lemonade when you have urinated on my head. Well, you know when I start off that way, I am in the mood to make a rant video. Of course, this is the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry, and I am your soul brother, number one, Angel Snub number seven. Man, things that grind my gears. Wow. Well, brother. What is it again that grinds your gears? What is it that got you so, so upset that you just got to get it off your chest? You got to knock that dirt off your shoulder. Well, well, come on, church. I'll tell you this. There are certain persons a large amount of persons who are Caucasian, I call many of them pink people, and then you have another side, a group that call themselves black, African-Americanists, or whatever, Negro, colored, however, you have two sides because, I don't know, they suffer low self-esteem or they want to prove something to somebody. They want to come before the world in their group, this Caucasian group, the white man, this Negro colored African American group, the black man. They want to come before us on both sides of this claim. And they bring to us that the white man or Western civilization is the greatest, is the supreme. We are the supreme people. So since we are the supreme people, we are going to develop systems to support our supremacy, and you know of it as white supremacy or racism in general, because we are supreme. We done everything. We created the TV and the light bulb and the car and whatever. We are so supreme. We are so powerful. We are better than Muhammad Ali. We are the greatest. And then, and then in order to counter that claim, you have a group of persons who have raised themselves up being victims of racism, being victims of white supremacy. They move forward and they say, no, you got it wrong, buddy. The African was first. We are the original man, the first man we done everything first. And since we done everything first, that makes us supreme. So enjoy your white supremacy because Lord, here comes 
black supremacy. La de da, la de da, da da da. We the greatest. We created martial arts, brother told me. We created the yo-yo. We whatever. We created the, the black man, the original man, done everything first. Well, let me bring a reality check to some of y'all. I know, I know. You don't like coming here because I, I hurt your feelings. Because you're living in the land of delusions of grandiosity. Well, somebody has to give you a reality check. Let me say this to the original African. We are the original people type of folks. If you are the original man, then common sense tells us if you were the first, then clearly you must have been the first liar. You was the first murderer. You was the first rapist. Because you can't just claim everything that you think or believe is positive because in this world you have both positive and negative. You was the first criminal. You was the first child molester. Since you are the original, you had plenty of time to do those things, correct? And then you were the first one to force your belief and your way of life on others. So the white man was living in a cave in Europe. That's what you say, right? Minding his own damn cave business. Taking a club, beating his woman upside the head with a club, playing with the family dog or whatever they was doing in Europe, climbing up trees, eating flesh raw, whatever the hell they was doing, they was not bothering you. Oh no, you have to be the first and you the best and you the supreme. So you got to go over. They didn't come to you. You had to go to Europe and you saw these people, how pathetic they was. And you had to get them out of the cave to take them out of their beast-like existence. Because you were more superior. You had to bring civil, civil, civilization to the savage. Oh, you paid for that mistake, have you? So you gave this, these people that you call cave people, you gave them your knowledge. You gave them your supremacy. Some of that knowledge, that wisdom. And they were good learners. Good, good students. Next thing you know, they start coming up out of those caves. Next thing you know, they began to do a little better than you. And they know what they needed to do. So they began to concentrate on weapons. Because they are going to take the supreme out of the box. Because now they are the supreme. And they made that move. And kicked your ass. Royally with your supreme original self. They made the first last. And you are still last. What is supreme about you? Oh, I'm not done. I'm not done. Don't get happy, Mr. Caucasian Supreme. So, again, you have both sides of the coin claiming supremacy. Now, you want to claim George Washington Carver and Thomas Edison and all the great inventors what all these different people invented. You want to claim that because these people came from your race or your group of people. And that's what makes you supreme. They built the pyramids. Your people built the pyramids. But you don't build nothing. Many of you can't even build a doghouse. But you're the supreme, you're the original man, but can't build a doghouse let alone a pyramid. Here you are, the white man, you're supposed to be so, so supreme. But the average Caucasian person, the average black person, can't do nothing. You can't fix your computer, but you're so supreme. You can't fix your car, you can't build a house, you don't know no plumbing, you don't know no wiring, but you're supreme. You wanna take the accomplishments and the talents of people just because 
They come from your so-called race so that you can feel supreme and you can't do a damn thing. If you're supreme, then every individual in that group Every individual in that race should be able to do the same thing and show their supremacy. They should show that they are gods in their own right and you can't show nothing. A bunch of reefer smoking, opioid addicted lunatics. Beer drinking, whiskey guzzling fanatics. That's what you have become and that's what you are. You are supreme, supreme idiots, supreme silly, stupid people caught up in some rhetoric that you cannot even back up. You supreme and you talk about what somebody else done. How am I supreme talking about I'm a great boxer and the only thing I'm telling you when well, Muhammad Ali did this and Sugar Ray Leonard did that, Marvin Hagler done this, and what's his name? The new guy on the block? Uh, I don't know. I don't keep it with boxing. Mike Tyson. Who's the new guy? Who's that new guy on the block? I forgot what his name is. The recent fella. I don't keep up with sport in play, so I, I don't know. How can I claim to be supreme? I'm a supreme boxer talking about what somebody else can do. Albert Einstein. Uh, what's his name that just died? Stephen Hawkins. You talk about these individuals, but you can't do nothing. You can barely drive your car to work every day, but you're the supreme being. White supremacy, black supremacy, but hey, but y'all not supreme. You're not doing nothing, have done nothing supreme. You as an individual running your mouth, talking about black supremacy, white supremacy, as an individual, what have you done supreme except claim what somebody else done? So if you claim it what somebody else done, how does that make you supreme? Simply because y'all in the same race, part of the same group, but you, you don't, what's your contribution to the supremacy? That's my question. You want to talk about what Egypt done, what the Moors done, and all the greatness of everybody, but you never say what you can do, what you've done, Caucasian or black or Negro, or whatever y'all want to call yourself, because you even confused, you don't even know what the hell to call yourself, really. So tell me, so how are you supreme? So of course I need to rant about this because you're dealing with some very ignorant, silly people. If I'm going to be supreme, I'm going to show you my power, my individual 